Now the next area which is usually sampled from an esophageal biopsy are the Barrett's esophagus. So this is the one of the most common indication why the esophageal biopsies are sampled. And what is Barrett's? So Barrett's is the name of the scientist who discovered this entity. Otherwise, pathologically, it is equivalent to a columnar lined esophagus. So we had mentioned that esophagus is an organ of the of the GI tract which is lined by squamous epithelium. But if this epithelium changes into a columnar lined area, then it is called a PLO or a columnar lined esophagus. And the second thing which is prerequisite for a Barrett's esophagus is the presence of intestinal metaplasia. We'll see what is a, what an intestinal metaplasia is. Then depending on the length of esophagus that is involved by Barrett's, we call it as a short segment or a long segment Barrett's esophagus. So if it is less than 3 cm, we call it short segment, more than 3 cm as a long segment Barrett's esophagus. Now, the forms which accompany a Barrett's esophagus, they will, they will very often mention about the Prax classification and he, the endoscopist is going to write about the M and C categories. So, M is the maximum extent of Barrett's that is from the gastroesophageal junction to the upper limit of squamocolumnar junction and C is the circumferential extent that is the areas which is circumferentially involved by the squamocolumnar junction. So M is the maximum extent and C is the circumferential extent of the Barrett's esophagus that is given in the Prax classification. The histologically squamocolumnar junction is uh, the squamocolumnar junction is the area where the squamous epithelium of the es esophagus meets the columnar epithelium of the stomach. Now what is classical for Barrett's is the presence of these whitish holes. These are called the goblet cells. And if you see goblet cells, the findings are relatively specific and you know that the intestinal metaplasia has occurred here and this is equivalent to a Barrett's esophagus. Now the second thing that we should know about intestinal metaplasia is that many a times it is classified into complete and incomplete metaplasia. So uh, now we will come to this that is the pass l chain blue stain and on pass l chain blue stain the goblet cells they will take up the acidic alchene blue mucin so the goblet cells are filled with acidic mucin and on alchene blue they will come become as the blue colored cells on alchene blue stain and that is a specific for a goblet cell now the next thing that we should know is the types of metaplasia how many types of metaplasia are there so first is we know that a normal squamous epithelium uh, esophageal epithelium is a squamous epithelium. So a normal esophagus is lined by esophagus epithelium and now when the acid is going to spill into the esophagus, this epithelium is will try to transform into an epithelium that is likened to that of the stomach so that it can resist the damage action of the acid. So now this epithelium will undergo a metaplastic change and it will become a gastric kind of an epithelium which is also called a columnar lined esophagus. So CLO name has come from the metaplastic changes of the squamous epithelium into a gastric kind of an epithelium. Now in the normal stomach we do not see goblet cells. So a columnar lined esophagus do not have a goblet cell here and we only see the columnar cells that is the foveolar cells which are PS positive. Now if the acid spillage continues then this epithelium will transform and it will gain the presence of goblet cells here. So these are alchene blue positive goblet cells in addition to these foveolar cells and this is known as incomplete metaplasia. Incomplete, why it is called so? Because it is in between that of gastric and small intestinal area. So we have a feature of a small intestine that is goblet cell, but in addition we have features of the gastric type of epithelium where we have these pass positive cells. So this is called incomplete metaplasia. When you see goblet cell accompanied by PS positive gastric foveolar cells. So this is incomplete metaplasia. Now again, if the acid injury is going to continue, then this entire epithelium, which is a mixture of small intestine and gastric epithelium, will now transform into a completely small intestinal type epithelium, where these pass positive foveolar cells will be lost and you will only see alchene blue positive goblet cells. And in addition, the PS stain is going to line the brush borders of the gland. So this is the brush borders which is PS positive and we see the alchene blue positive goblet cells. So and again to highlight we have already discussed the commonest metaplasia that we see in the Barrett is the incomplete metaplasia where you see goblet cells which are accompanied by PS positive gastric foveolar cells. And in complete metaplasia we only see a alchene blue positive goblet cells and a brush borders that is PS positive. 
Now there are different criteria which are given for the diagnosis of Barrett's esophagus and there is a difference in the population the western world think as compared to that of the eastern world. So in the western world the Americans they believe that the goblet cells presence is a must for diagnosis. So unless you see a goblet cells you will not call it as Barrett's esophagus. The Britishers believe that even if you do not see goblet cells you just have the columnar line mucosa with some prerequisite features you call it as Barrett. The Japanese believe that you do not require any histological confirmation and if you and you are endoscopically confirmed that this is Barrett then you say that this is Barrett. As Indians we take advantage of all these populations and we'll see how these Barrett's is diagnosed so we can utilize all of them together to diagnose the Barrett's disease.